in a yurt at the Black River Wilderness Park, just outside of Washago, Ontario. And this is where I'm going to start my adventure. This is awesome. <laughs> so why am I doing this? Well, Chris, a good friend of mine, he used to work for the Friends of uh, Killarney, and now I think he's got a girlfriend. So he moved south, and uh, he's now working for the Ontario Lakes Country Tourism. Well, we thought we'd have to get Kevin down here. I know, Kevin, you're used to more of the wilderness uh, backcountry experiences, but I think uh, over the next few days, you'll see that this is such an amazing paddling destination, and you'll leave here quite satisfied to tell the story. And um, so, yeah, he said, Kevin, we got like tons and tons of day trips for paddlers here. And uh, would you want to document them? I went, absolutely, that'd be great. But uh, how about if I dock them all together in one big trip? And he goes, is that possible? It is. I'm going to prove that. Your story that only Kevin Callan can tell. It's tough, it's tough roughing it out here. <laughs> the skitters are bad though, holy jumping. I cannot wait to start paddling. I can't, no, I can't get up. Oh, ow, oh. Ow. Well, I'm on the river going downstream the whole way. Love it. Ooh, it's going to be a hot one today. All right. Rapids, here I come. It's going to be a little bony, I think. Of water. So I went through a whole bunch of granite and pine, white pine. Now I'm in a lowland sort of swampy area of the river. Some uh, soft maple, red maple, basswood, tranquility, bird song. <laughs> I'm on the water. Nice day too. Ooh. I've entered the Green River and uh, so the black comes into the green and you can tell like the black is black and the green is green. <laughs> A really nice color water, beautiful river. I've always wanted to paddle this river. I've always seen it from the highway and said that looks pretty. I want to paddle it. Now I am. <laughs> Down the black. Uh, I don't know if I'm going up or down the green. I'm not sure. And then go portage through Washako. Out in the wilderness. <laughs> we, we love Washego! <laughs> I'm on Lake Kuchishing right now. Wind's not too bad, but it picks up real quick out here. So, I'm trying to make the miles and I'm actually going that way, but I'm going this way for now because I'm going to camp at the YMC camp down halfway down the lake. Uh, just to visit the, the camp. I used to work at camps 
a long time ago, and I remember this camp being a really good one. So it's worth a visit. Plus, it's the only place to camp. I think the most difficult part of this journey is to figure out where I can legally put my tent or my head at night. Which makes it interesting, for sure. Very, very interesting. I just passed another uh, camp, an outdoor leadership camp, and I'm thinking the YMCA one is not too far down from that, I think. <laughs> it's so funny though, I was how long I go, why are there no cottages along here? It's all undeveloped. And yeah, it's all owned by camps. Cool! It's still choppy. It's actually getting really choppy. Not breakers though, so I, I can manage it. And I think I see the camp. I hope I do. Because <laughs> it's getting late in the day. Um, I see a bigger building than normal, and I see a big, huge floaty dock thing. That looks campy-ish. Wrong camp. Mine's further. Oh, surprise! So, I'm just going to take my time. I'm going to be a turtle, not a hare. I'm Christy Cyberlink Spriggs, and we're here at YMCA Geneva Park. We're on Lake Kuchiching, um, and we are a conference, leadership, and camp center here on Lake Kuch. We're over 100 years old. We're YMCA um, owned and operated by the YMCA of Simcoe Muscopa, but we've been a YMCA since our inception back um, in the late 1800s. I think the really special thing is how uh, it's a bunch of families that come together. Yeah, I've been coming here since I was one. It's just a great place where people are able to learn and connect with the natural world around them. It's a really special thing. Everybody comes together and has an evening down by the lake or they have their meals together in the dining room. It's a, it's a, it's a mix and what's so fun is seeing uh, adults become kids again. What do you think of uh, this area? Fantastic. Yeah? Yeah. It's fabulous. What's your favorite part about it? Right here. Oh. Yeah. The water. The dock. Perfect spot for sunsets. Yeah. yeah. Like that. lot of good people in this world and they uh, are fantastic to talk to I love journeys like this the wilderness I love and actually that's number one to me to be quite honest to, to be in the woods but trips like this is the people you meet amazing people positive attitudes positive change I love it but I'm going to bed <laughs> Kevin Callen! <laughs> what are you doing here, Kevin? Hey! Good at can you? Can you give me a ride? Perhaps, where are you headed? <laughs> <laughs> Here's the scoop. I had uh, some choices to do this morning. I could have spent another four and a half hours and paddled back to where I was supposed to go down the Trent Severn near Washego. <laughs> or <laughs> I could get Chris to drive me back to Washego to cut off that four and a half hours that really wasn't really part of the, the route. I just wanted to visit the camp, which was really important that I did. We're driving along this road, like we just passed that, that other camp. You know, it took me two and a half hours. They, it literally took us six minutes, not even. It was a strong west wind yesterday, Kevin. <laughs> We're almost there, for God's sake. <laughs> now who made the, no way did you make this? Not a chance. That was made by my girlfriend. Oh, oh okay. I should have married you when I had the chance. <laughs> bon appetit. Well, I'm about to uh, start the Severn River of the Trent Severn Waterway. It's a canal uh, built across uh, central Ontario. And yeah, it's uh, day three. And uh, going down the system, I'll do one lock today, the first lock, get that all in order, um, pay for my lockage, and um, get to Sparrow Lake, I think. So I'll be looking forward to this part of the trip. Uh, actually, it would have done so far, it's amazing. But uh, I have been told that this part of the Trent Severn Waterway is one of the best places to go paddling. 
Uh, my name is Chad Buckner. I'm the manager of operations for the Trent Severn Waterway, and I'm here to ensure that all the navigational channel and all the locks are properly functioning and safe for you to use. The water snake just went behind you. Get it in town on out of here. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, sorry. that's one way to end the interview really quick. <laughs> Trent Severn Waterway is 387 kilometers. It connects Lake Ontario to Lake Huron or Georgian Bay. Um, we're a series of locks, dams, rivers, and lakes. We operate 44 lock stations and over 120 dams. We're spread amongst um, the low-lying areas of the Trenton region, traveling up through the busy Corth area and cottage country, and then further ending up on the farther end of the system on the, um, in the Granite Shield and the Canadian Shield of uh, the Severn region, which you'll be traveling through today. I just went under the uh, railway swing bridge, so they swing it around for the big boats. Um, they didn't do that for me. Mm. Muskrat. Oh. Rock. Rock, muskrat, and deliciousness. I hope I don't get a speeding ticket. <laughs> I think I'll be fine. This sure is a different trip, but I like it. What was that? Say so they charge you double? Uh, three times, yeah. <laughs> I feel a little bit out of place, just a little bit. It's funny, they all want to know where I'm going and then tell them, they're like, what? There's all this boat talk I don't understand. Like, uh, it's almost like a different language. <laughs> um, they all know what to do and what's going on, and I'm just like, rolling with the punches. <laughs> Should've brought a sailor's hat. Cool. So how do I do this? I'm a, I'm a canoe, yep. so uh, how do I go and get a, a, a payment system? You come to our blue wall which is blue to go through and gray to stay. If you were camping, you'd go to our gray wall. So you come to the blue wall and you come up to our office and we explain the fee system. Paddlers this year for a season's pass is half price. And you can either pay by the lock, by the day, six days or seasons. A season's pass would be a regular $8.80 a foot, but this year they're $4.40 a foot for your vessel or your canoe or kayak. Or we have lots of canoes and kayaks. We do. Um, we get travelers that are going all the way to Georgian Bay and they camp at each site and they plan on it taking them a week or two depending on the speed they want to travel but they go all the way out to the bay and back and frequently actually. <music> John Muir, will not the world suffer from the banishment of a single weed? Hmm. Time for a uh, snack. <laughs> Maybe a cold pop. A soda pop. Nice and cold. Wait, you see where I'm camping tonight. Yep, I'm staying at Bayview Resort on Sparrow Lake. Why not? So I'm signing uh, my life away here, and it's a vehicle make, a blue canoe. Okay, this one here. I'll... <laughs>
Blue <laughs> canoe. Okay, I just stepped out for breakfast and I came back to my room. And this is my room, my stuff is in here. <laughs> There's someone in my shower. This is, this is kind of spooky. Uh, okay. Excuse me. Andy! <laughs> what are you doing here? That was a nice surprise. And he's joining me on the trip. <laughs> I haven't tripped with him for a while. So yeah, he, he got some time off work and hey, hey Kevin, can I join you? It's fantastic. But I like going by myself. But also really like tripping with Andy, so I'm glad he's here. It's a lot of fun. And this stretch we're going to do is supposed to be one of the nicest parts. The Trent Severn Waterway is truly beautiful, especially when you start going from here up through to the Big Chute. Uh, that whole area, um, paddling, you have like great big rock walls and you have a little bit of rapids here and there, you have offshoots. It, it is a beautiful region to come to when you're a paddler. Well, we're off. We paddled Sparrow Lake and now we're going down the, uh, the Severn system. And I'm a seasoned person on the system because I've been out for three days on my own. And then Andy shows up and I have to teach him the ways of the Severn. Boy, green on your right, Andy. Okay. Boy, red on your left. And I don't know where the girls are, but there's two boys. Ha! <laughs> Get it? Is one of these boys named George? <laughs> Boy, George. <laughs> <laughs> and also you have to lather yourself up with uh, suntan lotion, wear old man glasses like this, and you're good to go for the day. So here's, here's boy. <laughs> there you go. The ways of, of the Trent Severn. We're wilderness savvy now, Andy. You're teaching me well. I keep forgetting this is actually a river because uh, there's a current but you don't know it. So we're going through a, well we're not going through the gut, we decided to go to the left through another channel because we're a canoe and we can do that. But yeah, it's a really pretty area. Look what we just got! Andy! Cold water! <laughs> Look what happens when you're in the wilderness! Nice canoeing. This is awesome. We're free as a bird, Andy! Can't take him anywhere. Swift Rapids. Uh, so. What's so special about this lock? Uh, What's well, the deepest uh, conventional lock on the system? Uh, the only two locks that are bigger are the uh, lift locks. Really? Yeah. Oh, so this is a good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is cool. This, we're we're yeah. gonna put our canoe in there, Andy. Yeah. That's a long way down, too. <laughs> Holy. So all right, we're at Swift Rapid Lock, and this is where I was gonna camp, but. Because Andy joined me, we're going a, a lot faster <laughs> than me solo, so we're going to continue on and push it to Big Shoot. Right. Big Shoot or bust. <laughs> Andy, we're going inside. Ooh. I just want you to know if I don't make it, this. Well, I'll tell you later. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, 
was awesome. Wow, let's be lock. This is an adventure, Andy. <laughs> We've arrived at the Wabic. This is the famous fish and ship place uh, I was told about by all the lock masters. And uh, we're going to go by, but we decided no. <laughs> we're going to stay. We're going to stop. See what it's all about. I don't think we're in the wilderness anymore, Andy. <laughs> I was just about to get naked. <laughs> We're in uh, Severn Sound, I think, uh, going through that place, and then that away. Oh, jeez. <laughs> so we're in town now. Uh, pop, ice cream, or beer? Yes. Andy, I think we're here. Um, it looks like some activity ahead, like a big shoot. Oh my goodness. Yes. You shouldn't say swear words like shoot. <laughs> where are we? Uh, is it big shoot? Yeah, we're, big not shoot. A, we're not at a lodge. I know, we're at a picnic table. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to take me out to dinner? Or no, what? I got some dehydrated food for us. Oh, dehydrated, that's perfect. <laughs> We didn't see any bears. Well, there were statues. Oh, those bears. Yeah, they were all like... And Mr. Callan would like throw a rock at them and they'd be like... And then he'd yell things like, Yeah, you big baby bear. You can't get me. And the bear would be like... So this is camping. And it's glorious. So some, some uh, locks have ice, and some I thought had wood. Um, this one doesn't, but the marina just up the road does, so, so we're good. I gotta go, I gotta, I gotta make my eggs. <laughs> what, you told me to put a sunscreen on? It's like I'm part of a Star Wars movie. A little canoe is going to be in there. Just a little canoe. So this is, it's normal for a canoe to go through here? Absolutely. Uh, probably the easiest load of all. Oh, well, I've never done this before. To some big water here <laughs> close to the bay just after the big shoot and just full of islands nice breeze it's, it's another heat wave today but the breeze makes a big difference and uh, yeah and when the sign says no wake that means no wake 
boats out, out there, okay? Most people, in fact, 99% of the people are doing it. But those two boats that went by us, I hope St. Peter beats the crap out of you up on the, the gates of heaven. That's all I got to say. Right, Andy? You know what I think? They thought, well, there's no wake because no one's died yet. Let's try and kill these two canoe guys. <laughs> then we'll have a wake. <laughs> And make sure when you see that weight coming, you don't take it sideways. You put your bow right into it and, 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 and cut through it. That one actually, we brought in water over the bow. Or I peed myself, I'm not sure. <laughs> so that is what I'm talking about. They just went past a sign saying no wake. So we gotta deal with this. It's time for lunch. <laughs> Mr. Baxter, where are we? We're, um, we're pulled over on the bank of the river and we're making some lunch. <laughs> this is probably the hardest trip you've ever been on with me, right? One of the toughest, for sure. It's way too sticking hot. It was, a, was it 30 degrees, but then like 40 with the Humidex, whatever. And yeah, yeah, we're not piling out in Georgia Bay right now. So, yeah, we're camping over there. You can camp at any one of our lock stations, pitch in, go in, use it. It's relatively cheap. I'm going to say very cheap. It's $4.90 for a, for a canoe or a kayak to set up a tent at any one of our lock stations. Where else can you go in Ontario for $4.90 and experience the system that we're experiencing via paddle and tent overnight? What's your favorite part of the, of the system? Um, this, personally, I grew up here, so this is home for me. So yeah, I did this as a kid and now I get to work on the lock, so I think it's pretty cool. Just the fact that I get to like actually welcome other people into like what I find is home and yeah, lock them through, I've locked people I've never met before all around the world and meet new people. It's tough paddling the Severn system. You work hard and then you need to relax. Okay, don't worry, we are doing a northern trip soon. Just if you're worried. If you're worried, I don't really care. <laughs> We're having a blast! Thanks a lot! You too! So I just keep telling Andy to paddle and I have to film. I'm not really even filming, I just don't want to paddle. Georgian Bay. We're on Georgian Bay. the uh, Georgia Bay section and it was quite calm. A um, bit of rollers at the end there but it was just a nice slight breeze and uh, yeah I can see it getting rough but um, it's all doable. All the islands out there they're pretty low. I don't know if they're crown land, feather land, whatever whether you can camp on there or not. I looked at the map before and looking at the islands you can't camp on them. They're just uh, either uh, too low and bushy or they're covered in uh, uh, cormorant poop um, and uh, also turns that it, uh, want to attack you. Our last little bit here, we're going up Coldwater Creek to the town of Coldwater. Uh, this last stretch, I, I really, really like it. I'm so glad we ended like this. The North River and uh, the Cold Creek, there's just nothing except cattails and birds and wildlife and turtles and fish. And, and yeah, it's good. Really good. Awesome! My name is Corey Snake. Uh, in our language, I'm known as GNU, which is, means Golden Eagle. I'm a band member of Rama First Nation, and uh, I was born and raised here in this beautiful community of Rama. 
the North River, the way our people used to utilize it was a secondary portage route. Uh, it was used to have a way heavier flow because there's a lot of farming along the river. It's very small now in size. Uh, previously, the North River flows from uh, the Coldwater River down into Bass Lake, which is also has Plastic Provincial Park. Uh, our people would por portage from MacArthur Bay all the way to Bass Lake, and then they would hit the North River and they would connect with the Coldwater River. So the Coldwater River, in our language, uh, we call it Todd Zebe, which means the river that's cool to the touch, and hence the name in English of Coldwater. And uh, Coldwater is actually the first ever reserve in Canada's history as well. And our people from Rama were a part of that. They called it the Coldwater Experiment, and our people used to live there at one point. Just before cold water, it's beautiful. It would make, make a really nice fall trip, full of willow, lowland, just massive trees. Like, I don't know what that tree is ahead of us, Andy, but that, 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 that's like older than you. Yeah, it looks like an old. Yeah, wow. Thanks for leaving my car. Uh, you good hands there, Chris. My shuttle driver from Ontario Lakes Country Tourism. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we're done. Woo -hoo! In the town of Coldwater. It's a nice town. You ready? Woohoo! Now we got got to go get Andy's car, Sparrow Lake, and drive home. Gives hug, hug, hugs and kisses to everybody. It was a really good trip. That was a really good idea, Chris. Actually, putting all those canoes together into one. I had an amazing time. Yeah. <laughs> Can you explain at least one of the containers? Yes. One of these containers is essential to survival in the wilderness, and that is beer. If you find yourself a beer along the way, a cold beer no less, then life is going to be wonderful. Oh, this container? Yeah, I don't know why it's beside you, but... To get through the night successfully, peacefully, without getting bug bitten, a container like this is key. It's a pee bottle. <laughs> I'm, I'm not knocking your age, buddy, but if you have a beer and a pee bottle beside you, well, you're <laughs> I can't hold the camera steady. 